Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Powercore Productions and Podcastings. And in today's video, we're going to be continuing My Hero Academia Vows of Vengeance. What if Deku was a monster? Season 2, Part 2. As always, if you're new to the channel or if you're a regular and you like what we have to offer, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Powercore Productions and Podcastings that has to come out now and in the future so in today's video we're going to be continuing with vows of vengeance as we go into the sports festival arc or in the second stage to be more specific the cavalry battle seeing as the students of class 1a compete against one another to show off their skills and abilities however unknown to both izuku and claire forces from the shadows look to make their move as they seek out the same thing, the device that can lead them to the all-powerful coins, the coins that can grant power to those who seek it. How will Izuku and Claire be able to handle these opposing forces as they try to keep their sights set on winning the sports festival? And how will they do when they have to compete against some of the best of Class 1A? For all this and more, stay tuned as we now continue. My Hero Academia, Vows of Vengeance, What If Deku Was a Monster, Season 2, Part 2. As always, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. With the teams now set in place, the cavalry battle was due to begin. Izuku, Claire, Mei Hatsume and Tokoyami have formed one team. Among them, Todoroki, Ida, Uraraka, and Momo as another team. Bakugo, Kirishima, Siro, and Ashio as another team. And another one to keep in mind was the team of Monoma, Kendo, Tetsu 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 Tetsu, and Ibarra, a team made up from Class 1B. With Midnight yelling for the start to begin, the teams of the Cavalry Battle would all move at once, looking to try to take each other's headbands. However, Izuku would find his team being the center of everyone's attention. Wanting to think of strategy, Izuku decided not to be the writer, but instead Claire would be the writer, while he would take holding the front, while Mei and Tokoyami would hold the left and right side. Izuku figured that with his strength, he'd be a much better fit for staying on the ground. Using his keen senses, he was able to keep his wits about him at all times, and they were able to stay on guard against any foe that came their way. It didn't take long for them to become the center of everyone's attention, as teams started vying for them, more specifically, Izuku's number one headband. However, even while maneuvering, Izuku was able to evade all the attacks that came his way, with Claire offering assistance as well. Using two of her talismans, she would use the Fire Talisman and the Wind Talisman, launching direct fireballs enhanced with Burst of Wind, acting as a deterrent and keeping everyone at bay. Dark Shadow would also cover the rear, fending off any attackers that tried to attack them from the blind spot, while Mei would use her various gadgets and devices to aid them in warding off any of the enemies that looked to try to take advantage. Izuku was impressed with how far Mei was able to get with just using her gadgets, or as she called, her babies. It was easy to see that she would be great for support heroes, with whatever type of item they might need to enhance their abilities or cover up any weaknesses they might have. While Izuku's team were able to fend off much more of the weaker sets, it were the stronger teams they had to watch out for. A huge block of ice would come charging towards them, 
with Claire just barely able to fend it off as she launched a pillar of fire to counter it. It was Todoroki, his eyes locking with Claire, and Claire having a wicked grin on her face as she saw it. Hmm. It seems like the Ice Prince wants to do battle with us, Izuku. Yeah, I've noticed. We need to stay on guard against him. It's not just his power that I'm worried about. He's also got some pretty strong allies on his side. And I guarantee he knows how to use them. And in this regard, Izuku would be correct. Using Uraraka's zero gravity quirk, Uraraka was able to make them pretty weightless. With Ida using his speed to propel them, they moved like a blur, a single unit. And with Momo using her creation quirk, she made whatever sort of devices that they might need in order to counter any team they came across. You could almost say that their team was the perfect mirror and counter to Izuku's, since they had been constructed well and put together, Todoroki showing his brain as a tactician. He kept his eyes focused on one thing, and that was getting his hands on that headband of Izuku's. Izuku knew he was the primary target, and thus the goal of the mission had changed. Instead of trying to fend off from everyone else, with Izuku at the forefront, they just focused on keeping Izuku safe at all costs, while also snagging a few other headbands of their own. Bakugo's team would come swinging in with Siro using his arm tape ability as they came flying in trying to grab at Izuku's headband, only for Izuku to counter with his monster arm at the last second, just barely holding off the explosions from Bakugo as they were sent reeling. It became a three-way deadlock between the three teams, fending off and trying to capture the main headband while also snagging off headbands from the weaker teams that didn't stand much of a chance. However, meanwhile in the background, Monoma and his team were doing a good job. They were acquiring headbands at a rapid pace because they had sense not to get involved in that monster three-way. However, Monoma was keeping his focus primarily on their quirks and abilities because he knew that it would come into play soon enough. The time was starting to tick down, and eventually the cavalry battle was coming to an end. Izuku's team had managed to keep the main headband intact, the one million point headband. However, Todoroki and his team hadn't given up. That was when Ida came up with an idea. Uraraka was almost at her limit, and she looked like she was on the verge of vomiting. However, Todoroki would tell her to hang on just a bit longer, Momo even making a bit of nausea medicine to help her out. Ida would tell Uraraka to make them all weightless and to hold it for just long enough. With the zero gravity holding against them, if he used his reciprocal burst, they could have a clear shot towards Izuku. From what they had gathered about his senses, he had a pretty good way of detecting where enemies were at any given point, so he had a good sense of direction. However, it didn't matter how good his senses were if his speed couldn't keep up with him. Todoroki would create a large wall of ice to serve as a distraction, and the moment he did so, Ida, using his reciprocal burst, and everyone being at zero gravity, would rocket towards them. At that moment, Momo would use a cable cord to wrap them up and keep them in place to stop them from trying to evade or to counter. And then finally, Todoroki would go for the strike and he would take the headman. Todoroki could feel that he was almost at his limit as well. He had been overusing his ice quirk and he knew very well that if it continued he could suffer from frostbite. However, there was only one way that he could help himself in this moment. But as he looked up into the stands and he saw a familiar face, he quickly resolved in his heart not to use that power. He would never use that power. 
He was going to show that this was all he needed to win. As Todoroki's team would take their mark, Izuku's team would be standing in the center of the arena, having fended off many more other teams. At the last moment, Izuku could see out of the corner of his eye something was coming. He would tell Claire to ready herself. Claire asked what she should do, and Izuku told her to use all five talismans on fire. Claire warned that if she did so, she wouldn't have much else to use, since her limit was only five, and there was a five minute time limit on each one she used. Izuku promised that they could handle it, and he asked for Tokoyami to get Dark Shadow ready as well. His suspicions were proven right as a large wall of ice came charging towards them, and a blur coming from the other side was moving just as quickly. Now, Claire, do it! Right! Claire would hold up all five fire talismans, slamming them onto the palm of her right hand. Now! Flaming burst! A bursting pillory wall of flame would collide with the ice, causing a great deal of smoke to appear in the middle of the arena, a fog that clouded everyone's vision. She saw through the attack. It doesn't matter. We have speed. We know exactly where they are. Toroki, you just have to go for it at the right time. Got it. Everyone hold on. Recipro, burst. In a flash of blue, Ida would tear through the fog, leaving an open trail behind them as they went flying towards Izuku's team. Everything seemed to slow down at that moment. As if the only two teams in that arena were Izuku's and Todoroki's. It seemed as though what was just a flash for everyone else was almost an eternity for the two teams. Todoroki reached out with his left hand, heading straight towards Izuku's head. It was so clear, he was just fingertips away. He could feel the index finger snagging at the cloth of the headband. However, just before he could pull it off, he would hear a crunching sound. He would recoil his hand back in pain. He could feel it. It felt as if his bones had broken in his fist. He would pull back towards his chest. Ida had been taken out of commission. As they looked, they would ask if Todoroki had gotten the headband. However, as he looked down at his left hand, all he saw was swelling muscle and bleeding knuckles. As he looked over as the fog began to dissipate, he saw it. Izuku had transformed his arm into a monstery fist, a fist that he was opening just now. He saw it. What? He saw us coming. He crushed my fist in his hand. Did he break it? No, but he came close. <laughs> nice try. You know, that strategy almost would have worked. Too bad I saw it coming. There was no way. How could he have possibly have seen it? His senses couldn't have been that good. They had the speed. Which was true. However, there was one thing that they didn't account for. And that was the simple fact that Izuku only used his reflexes when he needed to. If it came down to pure speed, they had the advantage. However, Izuku didn't have to be better than them. He just timed it just right. It was a gamble. If he had been off by just one second, he would have lost his headband. However, 
Fate had seemingly been on his side in that moment and it allowed him to prevail. The time had finally expired. There was nothing else that they could do. The cavalry battle would be brought to a close and Izuku's team would be the victors as they had managed to stay on top and in first. However, Todoroki's team didn't do too bad. They had managed to come in third. In second was Bakugo's team. And in fourth, Monoma's. The top four teams would advance to the third and final deciding round, which, after being determined by a random generator, would be one-on-one -on -one combat. Many in the crowd were excited to see the students and their abilities, to see what they had to offer and the chance for them to go all out. However, there would be a 20 minute reprieve before the start of the next round giving everyone a chance to cool off and relax, as well as get some much needed rest before the start. Everyone would take the time to recover and recuperate those that were going to be advancing to the next stage. Izuku would meet with Claire in the locker room afterwards, the two high-fiving after a job well done. Hmm, I gotta say Izuku, you were pretty impressive out there. As expected from my fearless leader, <laughs> you weren't so bad yourself. I'm just glad we were able to get the win. Although I wish we could have got more time. Only 20 minutes? Do you know where the coin is though? Claire would ask. From what I've been able to pinpoint, it's somewhere here in the underground of the stadium where the locker rooms are. It's not too far from here, although judging from where it's positioned, We'll most likely have to dig through some concrete if we're going to want to have a chance of getting out. Yeah, you're right. But when are we going to have time to do that? I think between both of our strengths, we should be able to get to it. If we leave now, I think we'll be able to make it there. Here, take this. Izuku would hand Claire the tracker. He would tell her to go on ahead as he had something else he had to do. It wouldn't take too long, it was just some stuff he had to put away. Claire would nod and Izuku promised he'd catch up with her soon. However, before he could, he would be stopped by Todoroki. You're a monster, you know that? <laughs> I get that a lot. That wasn't a bad strategy you had out there. You almost had me beat. Had you used your other side of your quirk, there's no doubt you would have gotten my head banned. So you know. Well, between the white and red hair, it's pretty obvious. There's more to you, right? After all, you share the same name as Don't You Say It. You have problems with your father? Problems? Problems doesn't even begin to explain how I feel towards that bastard. After what he did. Izuku would hear in detail the story of Todoroki. The fate of his family, the reason for his birth, why he had the power that he did. The fact of the matter is that I almost had you beat just using this side of my power my mother's power so I know it's more than enough to take you down <laughs> if you really feel that way then you truly are a fool just what gives you and what gives you the right to hold back huh everyone else here is giving it their all doing their best personally I think you're just half assing it that quirk that power it's yours. Tell me something. If lives are on the line, are you just going to let them die all because of your stupid vendetta? Todoroki would glare at him angrily. I'd be very careful with what you say next, Midoriya. Why should I? Weaklings don't get to talk down to the strong. If you come at me with that half-assed attempt again, I won't hold back. 
or break you. So, is that your declaration? It is. I didn't come this far just to come this far. I came here to win, and that's what I plan to do. Bakugo would walk up to the two angered. That's a fine speech, Izuku. But I don't plan on being left out in this. <laughs> so you can finally use my name now, huh, Kachan? Don't get it twisted. I once a Deku, always a Deku. But I ain't like Icy High over here. I don't underestimate a damn thing. I don't care which one of you I meet in the finals. I'll blow you all away. I'll burn everything to the ground to win. <laughs> I look forward to it. All three would walk away, preparing to go off to the next round. Izuku would eventually catch up with Claire. She had already begun digging under the concrete and she was making pretty good progress. However, the time was almost upon them for the next stage of the rounds to begin. They'd have to stop their progress for now here. However, they would run into a little bit of an issue. With just 10 minutes time before the start of the next round, as the two were getting ready to leave from the old storage closet they had been digging in, a girl would be blocking their only path to the upper part of the stadium. A girl in a short red sleeve hoodie, a short skirt, and leggings. So, you two are also searchers. What are you talking about? Izuku would say. There's no need to play dumb. We all know why we're here. Claire would smile. So, you're one of those collectors we've heard so much about. Hmm. You know what I am. Then I guess you already know why I'm here. And you know that I can't let you leave unless you give me what I want. What's that? That little device you're hiding behind your back. We know that you can use it to search for the coins. Let me guess. There's a coin here, isn't it? And what if there was? Claire would say. <laughs> you kids are so naive. You don't know the first thing about those coins or that alien you've been talking to. Trust me, he's not what he seems. Claire would be a bit disturbed by this, but she wouldn't show it. Oh? And I'm taking it you're the one we're supposed to trust? <laughs> you can do whatever you want, bitch. I didn't tell you to trust me or to work with me. The only thing I want is that device. You give me that, and you two can be on your merry way. It's obvious you two have used the coins before. I can smell it on you. <laughs> That's all well and good, but you see... We've worked really hard to get this, and we don't feel like giving it up. And besides, we're not dumb. We know as soon as we hand you the device, you're just going to try to kill us both anyway. Claire, come on, Izuku. Think about it. If she knows that we can already make one of these things. We'll just make another. And then we'll just have another issue on our hands. The last thing we need is to give them any kind of advantage or incentive. But what are we supposed to do? It's simple. We fight. The time was soon at hand for the third round to begin. The people in the crowds were cheering. In less than 10 minutes time, the third round would begin. The bracket would be displayed as follows. It would be a 16 participant tournament. In the first round, Claire versus the substitute Shinzo. 
Mei versus Ida. Todoroki versus Tetsu 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 Tetsu. Mina Ashio versus Kirishima. Izuku versus Monoma. Tokoyami versus Siro. Bakugo versus Uraraka. And Kendo versus Momo. And the match that would be kicking things off would be Monoma versus Izuku. The students were all filing in, Monoma waiting to walk out into the crowd. He was looking forward to this, to finally show those upstarts in Class 1A that they weren't all of what they thought they were. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to the crowd, under the stadium, Izuku had transformed into his monster state, as Claire had entered inside of him. We gotta make this quick, Izuku. We can't keep them waiting. Otherwise, they'll come searching for us, and then it's all over. Yeah, but Claire, Izuku would ask, what are we gonna do? If it comes down to it, it's either us or her. The girl would simply smile, a sadistic, wicked grin as her eyes glowed a crimson red. <laughs> you kiddies still think it's a game, don't you? Well, it's time I wake you up to reality. This is gonna be your grave. You have two choices. Hand over that device and I'll make your death quick and easy. Resist me. And I'm gonna make it slow and painful. This concludes My Hero Academia, Vows of Vengeance. What if Deku was a monster? Season two, part two. As always, if you enjoyed today's video and everything else that we have to offer, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Power Core Productions and Podcastings that has to come out now and in the future. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video as we continue Avatar Loss. What if Avatar was in ReZero Season 1 Part 4? But anyway, that's going to do it for the end of today's video. I'm Javon Harrington with Power Core Productions and Podcastings. Signing off. And I'll see you next time.